Welcome to a Blood and Pigment ship review. I am Joseph. I am Guy. We also have a guest this week. Hello, I am Dan. Welcome to Boat Week. Today we'll be discussing the Kanoa, or as we will probably be calling it, the Canoe, because it's easier to say. This boat cost two points. The Canoe's max speed is four inches. It does not have sails and has no sail settings except for zero inches and anchored. The boat's turn value is four. The Canoe's hull fortitude is two, and its hull integrity is three. That means it takes three hits to reduce the durability to one. The canoe can hold up to eight models. The canoe has the traits sweeps four, low profile, paddles, unstable, and ship's boat. We are saying canoe because canoa is just Spanish for canoe. And we aren't Spanish. No, we aren't. (laughs) (laughs) So boats in general in Blood and Plunder, how do they differ from ships? They are a one-deck ship, essentially. That's what makes a ship a boat, is they have right. they have one deck. One section. Yes, one section. And they typically don't have sails, with one exception. Being the two periodic. exceptions. Oh, two exceptions. I apologize. The longboat can put up some sails down great, but yeah, they can. Kanoa cannot. I like how it has the rigging destroyed, critical on four different results, but it has no rigging. That's awkward. No, and they printed that on the card rather than saying extra damage to this. <laughs> so how do you use the canoe in Blood and Plunder? Have you guys used it much? I've used it a, a couple times. Uh, not as often as you, but I have. I bought a canoe for myself just to uh, do some, some solo playtesting. And because it's, it's only two points, um, that is the cheapest boat in the game. Cheapest way to get on the water, right? Yeah, it is. Most of my experience comes from theory and building lists and reading a lot of, you know, the Buccaneers of America, where they, the Buccaneers actually took a lot of ships in periaguas and canoes being shoved off of their larger ships. Yeah, it sounds like they were used pretty extensively. We've been going through the Buccaneers Companion, the Firelock produced campaign, and there's a a one scenario where they did attack a bunch of ships with canoes, but it was a white knuckle venture because if you get hit in a canoe by a ship, it is, as the rule book says, very bad. It yeah. turns from a boat into a coffin, essentially. Matchsticks, yeah. <laughs> well, you have uh, unstable. That means that uh, if a cannon hits the ship or hits, hits a boat, then uh, even the units that survive, there's a chance that they're going to get knocked out. And then you have uh, being rammed that you're talking about, where every model has to make a save against being rammed, or they get knocked overboard. So it's very uh, scary trying to move up to it. The main reason you want to use a canoe is to zoom up and board a ship, but If you aren't careful, that ship will just turn into you, smash you, and you're all dead before you even get a chance to do it. That's been kind of my experience with the canoe. That is why you bring a ton. As much as you can. (laughs) Can't kill us all, all right? Quantity has a quality all its own. The uh, uh, canoe does compare pretty favorably with the bark in that you get about a comparable amount of models for the eight points of a bark. And it can be faster with paddles going, uh, you can ignore the wind, you can have everybody shoot. That is my favorite thing about the canoe, the paddle straight. You can punch around three inches every move without devoting anyone to it. Very flexible, it can turn tight, backwards, forwards, do whatever you need to do Well, you shoot and reload or shoot, shoot, shoot if you're playing natives. That's Mm -hmm. as big a strength to me, the paddles. And there's plenty of factions that, for at least amphibious scenarios, that are a landing force. Like, I know the Dutch Navy has one, I believe the English Royal Navy, or English Navy has one as well, where landing forces can't run ships. So in amphibious scenarios, you'll run a whole bunch of boats to get your guys out onto the, out from the water onto the shore. And they're usually pretty strong factions. All, that's something all boats have, is uh, boats can be beached. Uh, none, of, none of the boats can run aground at all. They, they don't have a draft value. Right. So you can just uh, do that classic thing where where you just 
push the canoe up onto the sand and jump, jump out. out. You don't have to worry about docking or, you know, any of that stuff. Or shoals, Joseph. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to worry about that stupid event. I always Shoal magnet Joe over there. <laughs> unseen hazard or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, that last time I we played sea battle guy and i we got that event but i was running eight canoes and i laughed at it must have felt good we put it right in front of your paragua and all of your canoes in paragua just sailed right over i made a point of sailing over just to show it (laughs) yeah (laughs) just park right on top of it big sailor energy so that's the thing is canoes are great for an amphibious scenario you don't have to bring artillery but you won't feel you wasted artillery if you get uh, load up on canoes and you can focus on uh, getting on land as quickly as you can and in the meantime while you're at, at sea it's it's not hard cover compared to a, a ship but it's at least cover yeah i play this mostly with natives and the no hard cover hurts but at least the natives have a six save anyway so they aren't getting nailed as hard mm-hmm. um very useful there is the fact that it's so low that if you're facing any larger ship, like a flute or I think even the back deck of a frigate, you have to take a penalty from a height advantage of the opposing ship because you're just sitting straight on the water. Yeah. So it's and not a, a happy place board. to be. That's yeah. No, right. it, yeah. So what I'm hearing is board from the bow. We're mid, mid now ship. because then you'll get hit by them. They'll just ram you and kill you. Oh, that's fair. Fast, so. <laughs> that's fair. That is fair. I forgot that was the thing. Um, that's the thing I kind of like to do with the Kanoa is spread my troops out a lot. They're so cheap. I don't even feel like I have to fill them all the way up. Maybe just put six men in them, each of them, and then at least there's so many targets the enemy can't kill them all. Even if they ram one, it's only one. They break one with a ton of <laughs> grape shot. It's only one. Mm-hmm. There's too many targets. They can't kill them all. That's the theory. And... Yeah, my my theory comes from the Buccaneers book in that you would have your boarding canoas or canoes to go up and board and have a couple of them with muskets that you use to keep the cannon crew layered on with that sweet, sweet fatigue. Yeah, I've had most luck with poison arrows and the canoa. If you can, the, my favorite thing to do, which I hardly ever get to do, I tried this so hard last game but i couldn't do it is just pepper the stern of your opposing ship so they're if you knock all those units down then they only can turn half half their turn and then you're much less likely to get rammed that's brilliant and you you know where the ship is heading too having no no active or active units on the stern will have the turn value. If a ship has a turn value of four, it drops it down to two. But if their turn value is three, it drops it all only to one. I love that. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> yeah. What well, makes it easier, too, once everybody's prone on this turn, that's a great deck to board. That's right. Yeah. Even if it takes a dedicated action, right? <laughs> yeah. You get to... You get to Lay out those casualties and probably you know kill far more un- far more models than yep. you would usually. No, wait! Don't board me. Let me get up first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling the arrows out of my arms. <laughs> Stick them straight to the walls. There. What do you guys think about the ship's boat trait? You can. That means you can have uh, one unit in more than one boat. So you could have a twelve or sixteen man unit in two different canoes they have to stay within four inches of each other basically stay cohesive but it's kind of a strange rule thing where you can do a large unit but they're in two different ships but you kind of have to make them just paddle parallel yeah we're going to talk about it with the other boats too but uh ship's boat is a underrepresented ability i believe especially because all of the boats including the canoe have a uh, sweeps four trait Ship's boat really lets you spread those rowers between multiple boats to make it so they're all moving at full speed without having to dedicate that many extra units just to rowers. You need two men per section, is that right, to row? So you need two men in one and two men in the other? Is that correct? Yeah, you need uh, double the number of models as uh, decks to row a ship. So in a boat that is two models, you can move at the speed at half speed 
if uh, you only have a number of models equal to the number of decks. So that would be one model. So that's interesting. You could put a group of six men in two canoes, three on each, and then a group of 10 men in the canoe, five on each, right? And then you could fill them up and get your full sweeps value. Yeah. And if you're running it with a ship, they're going to be, I won't bet your opponent will be mostly focused on your ship and will usually forget about the boats. Unless they can ram them. Yeah. Oh, and, and not in my, not in my experience. I but ran, then if they're I, going after the boats, they're not going after the ship. The multitude of targets is a good thing. Yeah, Corvette with a longboat, and I put 10 Macelles de Carvis in the, the longboat. And that was, the longboat became the target because those guys didn't have a, a, a hardcover save. Oh, dear. So it was, it was a massacre. <laughs> well, anything else about uh, the canoe? I'd say his biggest weakness is that unstable trait, just losing so many extra models beyond what gets shot. It really hurts and that combined with getting rammed. Those are the two things that will scar you for life once they happen to you. And the cool things are paddles and low profile to me. And ship's boat too. I think ship's boat is only a positive thing. I will say it come it make it brings up some strange rule issues that aren't addressed as fully as they could be in the rule book. Like we had a situation where I had two canoes trying to board. One canoe was close enough to board. The other one wasn't. I board with one canoe. What happens to the other canoe? Mm -hmm. I did inquire about that. And apparently you just suck them both up and they all can board together. So it's basically whatever canoe is closer is to control what happens for that boarding action. So it uh, can bring up some strange issues, but. Yeah. Oh, and, and to Mark, the what happens when the rigging is destroyed without rigging in the canoe? It it takes an additional point of all damage. So which is that's it? troublesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially on the canoe, it might it might cause a it might cause a critical another critical, or it might and it makes you make another save. So yeah, I will say the critical damage table is pretty nasty because. You get them pretty fast once you start getting hit. And if you get two leaks, you're done. Mm -hmm. Two fires, too. Is fires even on there? I didn't even check. It is not. Oh, good. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing to burn. Water. It's already been burned out. That's right. I mean, it depends if you got casualties on the inside. A small thing to point out is when you start getting rammed, if you get down to one fortitude, even a two-deck ship ramming you will give you a critical every single turn. It gives you two damage to get rammed with a two-deck ship, I think. If you do the math, it's kind of complicated. It's The, the math is uh, the number of decks minus one and then doubled for boats. Right. So, so two. Two damage. A critical every time you get rammed. And yeah. once you start getting rammed, it's very, 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 very difficult to stop getting rammed, I found out, until you're dead. Because if you're paddling or even sweeping, which you... Sweeps are probably dead by the time you're getting rammed because your guys are shaking. You just keep getting hit until you're dead. It's a brutal, dark game of bumper cars for a couple turns. Yeah, it is not. It's not fun. But don't get rammed in your boats. Only take this. Only take canoes if you're doing a scenario that requires it, or you're an amphibious uh, game. That's my motto. For some reason, I like taking buccaneers or um, like. Logwood cutters or rather another coast, a lot of snipers in them. It's not a great idea because they're high point models that can get shot easy with the no hard cover. Mm -hmm. But there's something fun about sniping out of canoes. You can kind of keep yourself back and snipe away. I haven't won very many games that way, but it, it feels historically accurate. And it changes kind of things fun. up. Yep. Yeah. I do like putting, I, I haven't, I put Bukene in. Uh, long boats, but I haven't put them in canoes yet. That paddles makes canoes a clear choice over a long boat in that tactical situation. But the natives are definitely the best with uh, just arrows flying multiple times at them. That's my favorite use of them. Anything else to add? That hit it all for me. Uh, the cost uh, of the canoe is 18 which is the same price as a long boat. And it's a, it's a good, simple model to paint. You don't have to get complicated if you don't want to, but if you want to paint little designs on the on it, you can. 
I will also mention right now that the canoe does not have a skid on the side to measure where it turns. So you get to turn from right. wherever you want. It's kind of fun. Makes extra maneuverable. You can really turn hard if you want or kind of push yourself forward if you turn from the front. Yeah, or even do sideways turning. It's it's weird. Where you turn all the way from the front and then you can go backwards. Paddles are a lot of fun. They are very flexible. You also can mod the sculpt pretty easy too. You can shave down the fronts to make them kind of pointy rather than square. You could put some damage on it. It's really easy to work on the hole and make it look a little more rough if you want. So simple if you want it to be, or you can gussy it up as much as you'd like. You can hang heads and arms off the front, right? Yeah. Yeah, it leaves, hang some limbs and heads from the front and, and really terrify your opponent. Terror. For a detailed review of the Kanoa and all the other ships on Blood and Thunder, you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out all the articles there. We have articles for all the ships and boats currently available, plus articles on different factions, terrain building, painting guides, battle reports, and all things Blood and Plunder. And with that, this has been another Blood and Pigment ship review. Keep your dice ready and the wind at your back.